What's up guys, Hit King here, bringing you another manga reaction uh, video uh, on this week's uh, One Piece, chapter 1063. So yeah, let's just get straight down to that. Remember by the way to like and subscribe please. And yeah, where did we leave off? So we, we started at the, uh, what was it, Eggtown, Egghead arc. I'm just going to call it the Dr. Vega Punk arc. We finally got Dr. Vega Punk. Or oh, we're about to anyway. But yeah, we started we started his arc. We went into this thinking we're going to be going to Elbaf next. And we ended up at wherever bloody hell uh, Vega Punk is. Which is so unexpected. Uh, we got the revelation that he's got several different clones of himself. I think about six or seven of them. I think it was six, wasn't it? He's very own six paths of pain, if you will. Uh, all female, by the way. Um, which makes me wonder if this is a case of Vegapunk having had a daughter in his life that he sort of wants to recreate. Or if this was a lover that he had. Uh, it would sort of maybe tie back with the obsession Hulkback had, maybe. Maybe there's a tie into that, perhaps. I don't know. But uh, it's very interesting nonetheless. Uh, and then we got the revelation that uh, CP9, uh, Lucci and Kuka and uh, was it Strossi or whatever, are going there to kill him. Um, and why? I don't know. The only thing I can theorize is that uh, they, they found out, you know, the, the world government found out about Momonosuke having Kaido's uh, fruit. You know, the one that supposedly was a failure and then finding out it wasn't a failure, technically speaking. And them being very pissed off about it and thinking that maybe Vegapunk has betrayed them and them wanting to eliminate him. I think it's more of a case of, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I made, and I, someone made this joke that apparently uh, the reason Vegapunk considered that fruit a failure was because of the colour. Because it wasn't blue, it was pink, so therefore it's a failure. And I did go on this little uh, uh, little uh, dialogue side story uh, rant uh, <laughs> where, where I tried to make a reason as to why why Vegapunk was like, oh yeah, yeah, you, you wanted an exact copy of Kaido's Devil Fruit. Well, I, I, I tried to make that, but the color was wrong, so I considered it a failure. And the World Cup was like, yeah, we need to kill this. We need to kill this fool. <laughs> like that's just that's just stupid. Uh, I'm wondering if that is the case. That would be hilarious if it is the case, or maybe there's more to it. And there's also the revelation that. Um, uh, Vega Punk has something to do with uh, Bonnie's father, and it seems uh, Bonnie is confirmed to be a princess. She is a princess. Kumo is her dad, which is a shocking revelation. Something that we waited years to find out, and we finally get it. Um, which uh, it means that uh, Bonnie is the princess of this arc. Funny enough, she's the princess of this arc. So that's completely unexpected. You know, uh, when Vega Punk was, or, or the girl Vega Punk was introduced, I assumed that they were going to be sort of like the princesses, but it doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, they, they more likely will be sort of uh, enemies turned allies, especially with CP9 coming in and getting that uh, reunion with them and uh, uh, some sort of fight with them as well. So, and of course, there's also something to do with Zoro wanting to ask Vegapunk something, whatever that is. I'm curious to know what that's going to be, whether that's him maybe asking if he can make a cure for the people of uh, Wano for the smile, or maybe it's something to do with Song, perhaps. Like, I mean, the fact he's seeing these people and they all look maybe maybe familiar maybe i don't know maybe maybe, maybe he's realized something and uh, he wants to ask something about it but i uh, will see we'll see where this is gonna go but uh i'm excited and i can't wait to read this next chapter so let's just go right to it chapter 1063 uh one piece chapter 1063 the only family of god so yeah the cover page guys uh, uh, we re uh the last cover page we saw we saw that Ch chocolate town was frozen so clearly Someone, Akiji, <clears throat> Akiji, I, 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 I don't know how to say his name now, came here and froze everyone while everyone else was busy dealing with Germa 66. And Bruli and Cracker are frozen. Well, Cracker's frozen and Bruli's crying, apparently sh uh, uh, regarding Charlotte. Uh, Germa 66, Cold Blooded Voyage, Volume 21. Pudding's been kidnapped. So, uh, Aokiji went to Chocolate Town and has kidnapped Pudding. And as we know, Aokiji is with the Blackbeard Pirates, and he's undercover with the Blackbeard Pirates, but why would he steal pudding? Is this on the orders from Blackbeard, or is this something more? Did he find out that pudding was going to get kidnapped, so he went and got her out first, etc, cetera, etc? Cetera. What is going on? Why? And the theory right now is that she can read the rogue chronoglyphs, so... Maybe that third eye is more than just taking memories. Especially if it can take memories from, say, someone like Robin. But she wasn't there, was she? Or was she there? 
I don't remember if Robin was in a whole cake eye in the dark actually. Uh, I don't think she was. But uh, yeah, interesting, interesting nevertheless. But yeah, starting with the first page where we're leaving off with, um, uh, what is it? A Luffy, Chopper, and I, I don't know. Oh, Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie eating themselves so stupid at the uh, in the lab. Pure delicious, a satisfying meal. What's ev what's keeping everybody? I bet they're all love. Uh, I bet they're all love the food machine, except maybe Sanji. And we're we're getting uh, Jibei's there with them, of course. We got a little robot dog. We've got one of the uh, Vega punks there. Punk number five. You guys sure can eat. All four of you have bulging bellies. Mine was already like that. <laughs> the Jibei. <laughs> That's funny, and the, the dog is eating scraps, it's eating, is it eating the recycler curse, so it's eating all the junk, that's interesting. So she's very big as well, like she looks like a little girl, but she's a giant, like a dwarf, like a, like, like Tyrion in, in Infinity War. So she's walking away saying bye, well I ought to get back to work, if I don't run riot, no one will. Interesting, so the same bye, she's going off, did she fly off like Astro Boy? She's like, yeah, she's like a giant Astro Boy if you think about it. So she's going off, and there's these two little people walking behind them, who are these guys? Uh, and it's like, what kind of job is that? And and Chopper notices them, like, who are they? So there's some tall people as well. Like, are they other Vega Pongs? What are they? Uh, I think it's safe to assume. And this is Bonnie talking. They're lab assistants of some kind. Odd. This uh, this is very odd. This place seemed uh, deserted a second ago. Were they hiding because they weren't sure about us? Uh, isn't it a little hot for those outfits? No way for real. Luffy. So what's going on? Luffy is putting on one of the uniforms. Whoa! These clothes feel so light. They're nice and breezy too. Where did you get those? Um, and yeah, and the revelation. The revelation that uh, they're making some equipment here. And apparently, in last chapter as well, it was revealed that uh, they've got a Pacific glove that can touch light. So there's a lot of self in this chapter already. Uh, especially with how they're going to be dealing with uh, Kizaru, I think. Uh, because if, if Vegapunk's made like weapons, technically, to deal with light and that, it makes you wonder why he's done that. Just for curiosity or because he's planning ahead, perhaps. But uh, I did want to say this. Uh, I do feel like by the end of this arc, a lot of these characters are going to get major upgrades. Whether it's like outfits or a uh, specific kind of armor or weapons that they're going to use. I think Nobby especially is going to get some sort of upgrade. Frankie and Choppers and the sort of the doctors and scientists, if you will, uh, aspects of the crew, I think will get like major upgrades. So I'm looking forward to seeing what will happen to them. Sanji, since Vegapunk was sort of involved with uh, Vinsmoke. So yeah, he has to get some of involvement. But yeah, I'm, I'm expecting everyone to sort of get decked out in a cool way by the end of this arc. And I can't wait to see that. Like, uh, imagine if we get just new awesome outfits that will carry on forward throughout the rest of, of, of this series all the way to the climax. That would be freaking awesome. Like, like oof. Can you imagine the drips these guys are going to get? And like Luffy just wearing that already. Like, it, it just gives me sort of an idea that, yeah, he's going to be wearing something similar or, or, or updated at the end. But yeah, you got Bonnie looking at some of the symbols. Style selection. How about a battle uniform? So yeah, like there's, there's a freaking machine here that will give you outfits. Like Luffy's pointing at it. He's pointing at this machine that literally says fashion. It's like, here, nothing beats free clothes after a complimentary meal. Mine still feel sticky from all that sea war. It'd be nice to change. Style selection, how about a battle from Hey, wait, I can undress myself. And yeah, look at that. Like, body looks awesome. Holy crap. It's like a mix of Germa's outfits or whatever, but just sort of more slicker, I think. Oh, black uniform and that. And Chopper too. Look at that. And Jubei's got a Hawaiian shirt. It fits him. Jubei in a Hawaiian shirt. It fits him very well, actually. Nice, nice. These are light. The boots make me feel like I'm floating. I, w I wonder if they are, if there's gadgets implemented where they can float. And Jubei's like, they even have tropical styles. These would make for perfect disguises, but it's properly too late for that. <laughs> and Chopper, it's so futuristic. It is futuristic. This is very great. I'm loving this arc so far. Like, we're just a few, we're just like one or two chapters in and already it's like banging. So yeah, they're looking around like Luffy's on top of the machine, just like eating a freaking pizza as well. Like, well, I'm off to find some weapons and deal with Vegapunk. Catch you late. Heads up. It's Kuma. Puma? Is it just me or is he looking for us? Kuma is here. Yeah, there's a Kuma here, and it says police on there. What is going on? And those and those guys that walked off, or they're, or they're still walking over. There's some walking there. Kuma, Luffy sees. Let's get out. Let's let's get out of here. He's about to charge, and Luffy notices that. Yeah, Kuma's charging. He's going there, and he's about to shoot them. He's gonna fire his laser beam. Provisions and garments reported stolen. Fees detected. Huh? That stuff wasn't free. And uh, yeah, Bonnie's just like caught by this. Obviously because it's, well, it's not her real, it's not her dad, dad, this is just a copy, but uh, still, like, it's like she can't do anything because she's seen her father's face. Then why did it just pop out like that? So yeah, it just shoots the laser and they're all getting flung back. 
surely the damage he's causing is, wor is worse than what we did. Maluki skidding on the floor. Is he trying to kill us? That's a bit harsh for theft. We'll be toast if we don't fight back. And GB's like, GB's like yeah, it's just self-defense. Then again, we are pirates. Hostile hosts come, into, come with the territory. Either way, we've got no choice. So are they going to be able to kick this dude out? or? So Luffy goes for his big cannon. Gum gum uh, Enomi hit. Uh, and But Bonnie comes in and kicks him away. Stop. Yeah, as you would expect. Dad. But it's not really a dad. So yeah, dude, Luffy gets flung up into the air. But he, you know, he avoids Kuma's blast. And uh, Bonnie sort of dodges as well. The landing is like, what the heck, Bonnie? D -d Didn't you see his lasers? I've got to slug him. And beep, beep, beep. He's a robot. And that's my father. What? He's the only family I've got. And Chopper's like, yeah, they're all shocked by this. When you said your dad was turned into a cyborg, you were talking about Kuma? And it, she's like, I'm begging you. But that's not her dad. We know her real dad is with, with the revolutionaries right now. She doesn't know that, of course. She doesn't realize that, but... That's sad, we're getting a little flashback, we're getting a flashback to her as a baby and Kuma holding her up, oh man, that's insane, like please don't hurt my daddy, oh man, you dummy, get out of there, she, she's about to get killed, it's just a pacifista, I hope, I hope Luffy can explain this to her, but yeah, it, blow, it blows a laser joint, and it literally blows out the wall and into the sea, like, and then we cut to, we cut to a pirate ship, a certain sea in the new world, it's, it's, it's Black Bitch, pirate ship, holy crap, Z ha ha ha. Oh, this ain't good. And there's Law Submarine. Oh, God. L L Law has run into Blackbeard. Oh, oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. This is not where I thought the story direction was going to go, like, it's no good, Captain. And there's leaks in his ship, another hit like that, and the water pressure will crush us. Let's surface. We won't be able to escape. There's land north east of here. And what the hell? I'm just going to get some loop. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Law's a girl. Law's a, Law, a woman right now. And Beepo behind him. And he's got, Beepo's got hair like, and makeup and lipstick. And Law looks like he's Robin. He, look, he looks like Robin. He, he. Guys, he looks hot. Uh, 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 she looks hot. I I, I don't know what what, what 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 right pronoun to use for this. Um, either way, I'm horny right now, and it, this is this isn't helping. Holy crap! Uh, prepare for battle and be quick about it. Um, what is going on here? Wow, Captain, you're so cute now. Do you have a death wish? You've got two of his crewmates hugging it out, and are, are they turned into women as well, or is one of them turned into a woman? I, I think one of them might be a woman. I don't know what's going on. Crap, we're sorry. What is going on? Are they all women right now? It got me too. Keep away from the infected. His power's contagious. They're, they're hoping to disorientate us with this forced gender flipping. It'll be fine, though. Our, cl our clashes with the Empress taught me. That devil fruit powers can be counted if you use a great deal of Haki. So they're using Haki to deal with the transformation. Captain, we've surfaced and laws back to normal. Okay. That was short lived. <laughs> what was that about? What the hell? Um, <laughs> so now we've got, uh, what is it? We've, we've got the, the, the submarine surface and we've got the freaking uh, horse. Or Pegasus? What is going on? I don't remember them having a Pegasus. Was it always a Pegasus? What's going on here? Oh, he's managed to nullify the disease. I'd expect no less from a pirate worth three billion. It's what's his name? Doc Q. It's Doc Q. Oh wow. Uh, looks like we're gonna we're getting a reintroduction to a lot of these characters. That's how diseases go. He, he was the, he was the doctor dude, right? He was the one with the grenades, right? An antibody always comes along, and when one person finds a remedy, it's not long before everyone's cured. Ugh. 
It was entertaining though, right? I call this one the Milady Transformation Plague. And then we got in, we got Van Aga, the uh, sni sniper dude. Burgess, I'm gonna send you over to the island. Got it. He's gonna send him to what? And Jesus, oh Jesus, Burgess, who was there, just disappeared. He was there one minute and he's gone. Somebody's in the woods. So the the the, the little the little pirates have made it to the island. See, haha. -ha. And there's there's Bl is that Blackbeard on top of the horse? It's been a while, hasn't it, Trafalgar Law? <sighs> What do you want? And he's getting his sword out. What, there's, there's so much going on. Like, what is going on? Uh, so you've got Burgess there. Wee ha ha! My buff buff fruit powers are the freaking best. He's got buff. He's got the buff buff fruit. Jesus Burgess. So he got a battle fruit in the end. What is got? He's ripping a mountain up and he's throwing it. Zee ha ha! Wee ha ha! Burgess. He's lifting a mountain. How did he get in front of us? Superhuman strength. Bizarre contagious teleportation. So. So Doc Q has as 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 the ability to give certain diseases or something to people. Doc Q can teleport. Uh, um, Alga Van Alga can teleport, and Jesus Burgess has super strength now. Okay, they they all got like they got specific types of superpowers or devil fruits now. Uh, uh, super. These guys have hunted down some insane powers. No wonder their bounties keep rising. It's gonna crush us. So you've got the mountain coming to for him, and and then Lord uses Rube. And teleports it away. I think into the sea, so it crushes there. And then you've got black. You've got black. You've got Blackbeard on on the freaking horse coming in. The horse is called Stronger, mythical horse, horse, zone fruit model Pegasus. So they fed the fr horse a freaking devil fruit to turn into a Pegasus. And Doc Q is riding on top of there, I think as well. When you kid and straw at left Wano, I knew one of you would end up here. We, uh, but I had no way of knowing which of you would show. Uh, Com Commander Cuff Stronger says he's struggling to carry our weight. I'm struggling myself. With Big Mom and Kaido gone, the world's gonna turn on its head. Sounds fun, huh? Zee ha 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 Sorry if I'm doing the voices. I'm just trying to distinguish. Is that any way to speak... Uh, so what does Law say? Uh, what do you want? Is that any way to speak to a fellow member of the worst generation? The Blackbeard was one of the worst generation? Kaido had one. Kaido had one, didn't he? Just how many load poneglyph rumblings have you got? I'll be taking him off your hands. You took the words right out of my mouth. Let's settle this. Winner takes all. When Titans clash. So, holy crap. What a way to, to end a chapter. So we're like, we're sort of getting like two freaking mini arcs in one. We've got the, we've got the Vegapunk arc. And now we've got Law versus Blackbeard arc. This feels very similar to Ace versus Blackbeard. But in that case, it was Ace going off to Blackbeard and losing. This is Blackbeard going off to Law. And at the same time, with the cover story, we've got I I Aokiji kidnapping Pudding for some reason, which may which very well may do may do do with the fact that she can read the poneglyphs. And now Blackbeard's encountering Law, and Law has what three of the three of the road poneglyphs with him. He's got the freaking one from a uh, Zhao. He's got uh, uh, the Layer Cake Island uh, uh, road poneglyph. He's got Kaido's. So yeah, this feels like it's all gonna amount maybe in, into a story arc. Where where Kaido and Luffy are going to be fighting it out for the last Rogue Poneglyph. And putting very well maybe on uh, Kaido's uh, side. Not in terms of wanting to be on his side. But in terms of she's kidnapped and, she, and he's going to use her to read. Or maybe they're going to get her to steal Robin's memories. And then that's how Pon uh, uh, you know Pudding is going to read the Poneglyphs from those memories maybe. There's so much to, di to digest here. But this is insane. Uh... I never thought or expected this would be the direction to go. It makes you wonder where, what direction Kid went into. So where did he end up with? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, is he going to run into Shanks then? Like, is this what's going to happen? Like, everyone's going to run into a Pacific? Because we know Kid is going to look for someone. Someone with a flame scar, right? Who is that? I don't know. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Maybe that will be a cover story. Maybe that will be a, a layer arc. But I'm very curious what this means for Law. Like, uh, Blackbeard wants the Poneglyphs, Law, that he's got the notes on them. But Law also has the you know the the, immort the immortality fruit for Christ's sake like like what what if he gets manipulated to use that like <sighs> we're story man it's going into directions we did not expect like god damn uh, One Piece just knocking it out the park every single time like damn like it's good it's so good like when it's good it's good and when it's it's good it's like okay good but this is. This is great, like, uh, the stakes are just, like, ampling up, like, this art 
just started and immediately it's like boom we're all the way here like we're going straight up to the freaking top like this is how bad and serious things are gonna get like god damn like wow i gotta thought it man older just knocking it out of the park as usual well done older well done anyway that's my reaction for this video i hope you guys liked it uh probably see you in another few weeks again uh uh, as I will probably be doing it like that. I prefer it this way. It gives me more time to do other things. But yeah, good chapter. Can't wait to, to, read, to read the next one. I uh, hope you guys liked it. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care. And... Bye. 21 gigabytes. Jesus, this, this is a lot for uh, recording for a webcam. Like, why?